What's happening, Wargamers? Welcome to another episode of The Dossier, the Marvel Crisis Protocol show, where we talk about Crisis Protocol characters, their sculpts, cards, and what we kind of feel they bring to the game. Uh, of course, these are just jumping off points. Uh, there's lots of really great in-depth tactical discussion you can find online. Definitely worth going to take a look at all that sort of great stuff. Uh, and of course, these shows can't happen without the wonderful support of all our patrons over at patreon.com slash Studios. Thank you guys so much for being patrons over there. You allow me to stay current with this content, branch out for additional content, and of course, keep my dog fed. And that is the most important part, isn't it? Making sure that uh, that little Indiana is uh, is fed. Um, so today, we are going to be taking a look at Omega Red. And this is uh, Arkady Grigorovich Rosovic. Uh, I probably butchered that uh, pronunciation quite a bit. But uh, yeah, so we, we have Omega Mered. So let's take a quick look at his model here. And I think this is probably one of the, the coolest models in the game. Uh, it's got a, just motion everywhere. I love how big and imposing he is. He's got the tendrils everywhere. They've actually got some pretty good elasticity to it, so I haven't been too worried about breaking any of them, which is really kind of cool. Uh, the details on the suit and the metallics, really kind of nice. Overall, I I dig the model. Like, I mean, I don't have a whole lot of notes for it. I don't think there's too much more that they really could have done with it. I, I think they really kind of captured the feel of, uh, of Omega Red on this one. And uh, yeah, just generally speaking, I, I, I like it. I like the... I like that uh, you know everything has this sort of fluidity to it. I like that he looks big and he looks imposing. Um, just in general, yeah, great stuff. So no no real notes on on the Omega Red model uh, for his card, however. Let's just make sure he stays in focus there. Uh, for his card, let's take a look at that. So he's got six stamina on both sides. He's a short mover. He's size three for four threat, and he is three three four for his defensive stats. Nothing too bad outside of that. He's on a medium-sized base, so the short move isn't as bad as it could be, but he is still a little on the slower side of things uh, to get around the table. But overall, I mean, you know, it's okay. It's it's what we've seen in a bunch of other four threats. <coughs> He's got carbonadium coils. I think I pronounced that correctly. Range 3, 5 dice. It is a builder attack, so uh, power equal to damage dealt. And Drain Life. So uh, after the attack is resolved, if the attack dealt damage, it removes one character from itself. Or one damage from itself, sorry. So it's a way of kind of bringing uh, some stamina back onto him. It's kind of a shame that it's not cumulative. It's not like a bunch of wild triggers or anything like that. Because, um, I mean, five dice, you're maybe getting two successes through on average type thing. Uh, so it's it would have been nice to get a little bit more, but it's, it's still a, a nice little uh, builder attack. Next up, we have Red Terror, range 3, 7 dice for 4 power. Uh, it is another physical attack, uh, but you can also make it an energy attack. Always like it when you have this sort of uh, option and ability. It just creates a little bit of utility for the character, which is always really nice. Uh, it has a Wild Absorb Essence, so change one of the defending characters hit uh, Wilds, Crits, or Shields to a Skull, and you gain 1 power for each die changed this way. So yeah, it's uh, it's it's kind of a it's kind of a cool thing. Now, it does say like it's not a cumulative wild thing. So it's uh, at least as long as I'm not reading this incorrectly, one wild is just changing one die. So it still kind of converts into to two damage as a result because you're you know getting a success through plus you're stopping one of theirs and you're getting some extra power for it as, as part of the deal. Uh, but it's uh, it could have been just a little a little bit beefier, uh, I think. At four power, eh, it's it's okay at four power. I would not have been opposed to three power on this one, especially given it is range three. Like he's got that range three uh, uh, threat range, and he's a slow mover on that on that medium base. So, you know, it is kind of easy to work around him a little bit if um, if the other player is not uh, not really making the most of his situation. Uh, next up, we have an active ability called Death Factor. For two power, this character and enemy characters within two of it with the poison special condition suffer my, uh, two damage in the order of your choosing. So basically, you can you know how like you can basically select how people are, are taking that damage. So I mean, if you have any sort of effects that might trigger off a um, <coughs> off off a character dazing or taking damage or anything like that, um, you just select which order it goes in. I mean, whether or not you have any real advantage to that, that that's going to be game state, and you know, you're going to have to make that call on the spot. Uh, and it can only be used once per turn. 
He also has an active power in Snare for two. Push an enemy character within range four of it and within line of sight, uh, medium, towards this, uh, towards this character. And a character can only be pushed by this once per turn. This is a great ability. Uh, that medium-sized base, that range four, that is a lot of space uh, that he can kind of reach out and influence and everything like that. And, uh, you know, anytime you can sort of displace a, an enemy opponent that way, it's always really kind of solid. Uh, so, yeah, you know, no notes on that one. He's got Carbonadium Armor. When this character would suffer damage from an enemy effect, reduce the amount suffered by one to a minimum of one. Damage reduction. Cool. Gotta like it. He's also got an innate power, Death Spores. Enemy characters that end their activation within two of this character gain the Poison Special Condition. So there we go. We got some synergy with Death Factor up there. Uh, additionally, at the end of this character's activation, enemy characters within two of it gain the Poison Special Condition. So Omega Red can really dish out Poison. And Poison is one of those conditions that I think... A lot of people never really think about it until it's actively messing up their power economy. Because, you know, usually you're getting power through other things. You're being punched or you're you're doing damage or something like that. That one power in the power phase is kind of an afterthought for a lot of players. Until all of a sudden you're no longer getting it. <laughs> it messes up your game plans. messes up your economy. I love it. Uh, and, of course, he is immune to poison himself. So that uh, that death factor means that he's, uh, he's never going to poison himself. Which means he's never going to be taking the two damage himself. So if you can set up a chain of events, you can actually do some cool stuff with this uh, with this death, fa death factor with ensnare, and really really mess up the uh, the economy of the other team. Uh, so as far as where does he belong uh, in in the game and everything like that? Well, he did recently. Uh, I believe he was criminal syndicate, but he also did recently get updated uh, with Mini Stravaganza to become a. Um, uh, a Winter Guard as well, which is a really nice addition because Winter Guard kind of suffered from a lack of options. Omega Red gives you another option to bring somebody in there to to make them affiliated, uh, give more use of those those tactics cards, and just generally be more useful. So I do like him there. As far as other places that he can go, well, I mean, we've had some fun running him with uh, with Baron Strucker uh, in the condition game that uh, that Strucker likes to play. I think he could actually be a lot of fun uh, building around uh, any list where you can you can really take advantage of um, of area effects and everything like that. Uh, I've actually really wanted to try him with, say, you know, throw in throw him in with like a with an Iceman, for instance, who's going to be slowing people who uh, who get within a certain range, uh, or uh, you know, maybe maybe put him in with the upcoming Shocker. Uh, who's going to like really, uh, really disrupt things with the shot, uh, with that, um, if the grounds are rocking. Uh, so I think you can do some cool stuff that way. I really think his biggest issue is probably his mobility. Uh, you want to make sure that he's in positions where you can actually make use of his range three attack, where you can actually make use of his, his ability to pull people in. So as long as you can do that, I think he actually brings some really cool stuff to the table. I do think that there's better four threats out there, unfortunately, uh, but, I mean, I think you can kind of build a neat and interesting team around him. He's not terribly power-starved, because I don't think he's always needing to use all his abilities. I think uh, I think if you can give him an extra power here and there, though, so he can do both an ensnare and a uh, and a death factor, uh, really kind of cool. I don't know if Red Terror is really... Red Terror, actually, is probably not worth the four power. I think, generally speaking, with Omega Red, you're probably better off just using the uh, his, his standard builder. Uh, get those five dice, get those potential drain lives in there. Um, I think that's mostly where you're probably going to build that power. Make sure that he's supporting the rest of your team a little bit more by moving people around, poisoning people, and maybe getting some splash damage. Because two unanswerable damage is is actually kind of a big thing, uh, and it's just you know it's just something he can do. And the fact that he can he can do that to all characters within range, or well, all enemy characters within range two, is uh, is really kind of uh, kind of a cool thing. So yeah, there's Omega Red. Hit up the comments below. Let us know what you think about Omega Red, what you like about him, what you don't like about him, uh, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, you know, get that conversation going. If you want to support the channel, hit up patreon.com slash agesbrandstudios, or you can go check out iwargame.net, use code agesbrand, save 10% on your uh, battle mat needs. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. Happy Wargaming.